So firstly, to set up the background, I'll talk about Delta Mush. It's a quite popular tool in industry. The idea is to reduce the authoring cost by avoiding weight pending. For example, if we have three joints drawing red color here, and we just do the rigid by, the geometry will break when we animate the joints. To fix this, Delta Mush uses Laplace and smoothing, or mushing as named by the original authors. Smoothing fixes broken geometry, but it shrinks the mesh and blurs all details. To recover the details, we compute delta. It's a difference in the rest pose between the original geometry and the smooth version stored in the local coordinate frame. Those are green lines in this figure. And note that we only need to compute delta once per model, but not at runtime. So now we'll use the delta to recover the surface details of the mush. When we add delta on top of the mush using the local coordinate frame of the deformed mush, we have the result with smooth deformation and sharp geometry details. The great thing about delta mush is it produces good quality deformation with very simple concept and setup. But in terms of computational complexity, it's not so nice. The Laplacian smoothing is an iterative algorithm. For each animation frame, many iterations need to run sequentially with synchronization in between them. Using implicit Laplacian can reduce the number of iterations. But the trade-off is each iteration needs to solve a large-scale linear system. And even with pre-factorization, the back substitution step is hard to parallel on GPU. So even Delta Mush can reach the real-time performance for small-scale research and authoring tool. It's not suitable for large-scale and high-performance game and VR engines. And our goal for this project is to make Delta Mush to be a direct skinning method. And here's a quick review of the landscape. Our work shares the similar computing architecture with other direct methods which typically can compute all vertex transformations in parallel and um, the computation on each vertex only need to access small local memory. This is suitable for implementation on GPU shaders. There are indirect methods that can optimize some global energy term, so they typically offer higher quality, but the computation costs are also more costly, either with a large-scale linear solver like Poisson stitching or many iteration and synchronization lie as rigid as possible on the original Delta Mush. It's also worth to mention that in industry, there is a practice of learning LBS skinning weights from example poses, which is a data feeding problem. Example poses may be modeled by artists or generated by simulation. And there was also an idea of using Delta Mush to generate example poses. That was nice because Delta Mush is easy to set up, but would be nicer if we don't even need to do data feeding. So with that inspiration, we rework the math and make a direct model that respects all the good of the original Delta Mush, which means high quality deformation with no weight painting. We even extend the original model to improve the quality. Here. We show the skin sliding effect produced by setting different smoothness amount of rotation and translation. To our knowledge, it's the first direct model that can do skin sliding. And finally, we offer different variants to balance between computing, storage costs, and deformation quality. So now I will present the main idea of our model. Suppose that we deform a bar using Delta Mush, where the top left figure here shows the rest pose and bottom right figure shows the deformed pose. The bow blue at the core of each bar shows the corresponding mush for each pose. And the deformation is driven by two rigid bones shown in yellow. So basically our setup here is Delta Mush on top of rigid binding. So for each vertex, Delta Mush needs to define a local coordinate frame to store the delta. So if I visualize the local frame by red arrows and the delta in green here should be invariant in the red local frame. And that means local transformation to deform the mush, which is this. It's also the local transformation to deform the final geometry, which is this. 
To solve for the vertex transformation of the mush, we realize that when doing Laplacian smoothing, the final position of each vertex will be the weighted sum of original vertices on a local patch. In this figure, we show the patch in red color with smooth fall up represent the weights. And again, we are trying to find this transformation. And that will be the same as this transformation of the whole patch. This is a weighted percussive problem, where we find the best rigid transformation by minimizing the sum of square differences between two sets of vertices with applying transformation on one set. So in this formulation, the weights of the local patch A sub Ki here is defined by the Laplacian matrix L applying P times, and I is the identity matrix. We can rewrite the objective function by replacing the articulate pose by linear blend skinning formula where we can use 0 or 1 skinning weights. The objective function now becomes a nested sum. You can think of when computing it, you need two nested for loop. The outer loop iterates through all the vertices, and the inner loop iterates through all bone transformations. And at the inner loop, the bone transformations are unknown before animation, so with traditional data mush, we need to compute this loop for every frame at runtime. Instead of doing that, we try to rewrite this expression so we can swap the scope of two loops. We expand the nested sum and regrouping the terms by the bone transformation m sub j. Here we use a small trick of rewriting the norm 2 by the trace of the matrix. With expanding and regrouping, uh, here is what we end up with. Now the two sum loops have been swapped, and please don't try to read the equation, just look at the color blocks, it's easier. And another thing you might notice is that by regrouping the sums, now the two inner sum loops are the same and their value are constant, regardless of all bone transformation. That means we can pre-compute and catch this. So semantically, we found out that the term we pre-compute are very similar to multi weights Psi sub ij as the weight to relate vertex i and bone j. At the bottom here is the visualization of how they are formed. The Laplacian weight a sub ki and the LBS weight w sub kj are scalars. So the final matrix psi a weighted sum of all outer products u times u transpose. And these outer products are symmetric matrices. And therefore, psi are also symmetric, and we can save some storage. We also note that Spanish structure of the multi weights are also very similar to the regular scalar skinning weights. That means there will be many zero multi weight matrices. And we also note that in practice, we don't need to compute the matrix A here explicitly. This is a square matrix with a size of number of vertices and not so sparse, so computing it would be expensive. Instead, we do the Laplacian smoothing to raise the exponential P one by one, which means we use the size matrix at P at T minus one to compute the new size matrix at P at T. This is equivalent to do Laplacian smoothing on this side matrices with some matrix reshaping. And once we have the pre-computed multi-weight matrices psi, the runtime algorithm is straightforward. We need to blend input bone transformation matrices m sub j with weights psi sub ij. And the result here is one 4x4 four four matrix, and we can use this uh, sub-blocks Q and P to solve the progressive problem. Here we use singular value decomposition to solve for the rotation matrix R sub I and then use the rotation to compute the translation vector T sub I. So this algorithm will give the highest deformation quality. However, it could be a bit expensive depending on the implementation of the 4x4 matrix operators and the 3x3 singular value decomposition. So we propose some variants of the algorithm to cut some corners and improve the performance. Here variant 0 is the original SVD algorithm in the previous slide. Variant 1 uses uh, inverse transpose to approximate the closest rotation. 
This is similar to the way of transforming normal vectors with LBS. Variant 2 and 3 reduce the data storage and computation by using just one scalar to represent the rotation, which is illustrated by a purple square. So instead of solving for the rotation, we just do rotation blending. And we can either use quaternion blending, which is variant 2, or linear blending, which is variant 3. Variant 4 further reduce the number of multi weight to 2, and variant 5 just use one scalar weight. Here, some variants are equivalent to previous skinning algorithms. Variant 1 produce exactly the same result as the original data mush, in which the local coordinate frame is represented by two tangent vectors. Variant 4 gives the explicit formula to compute the center of rotation for each vertex, which is equivalent to my previous SIGGRAPH 2016 paper. And variant 5 is the same as baking original data mush to linear blend skinning using skinning decomposition. Here's an example to compare the deformation quality between different variants. And now I'll go back to some poses. And variant 0 here shows pretty nice result. It's just like many indirect deformer, like as rigid as possible. Variant 1 use inverse transpose, so there is some distortion here. But remember that starting from variant 2, we only use one scalar for rotation part. So the change in bone translation cannot propagate to the rotation part. And we have this artifact. So if we shift the joy further, some local transformation of variant 1 will be inverted. However, in practice, normally we control both the rotation and translation. So the difference is less noticeable between variants. And in this case, we see some distortion of variant 1 here and variant 3 here. We also notice with variant 5, which is the uh, LBS, it collapses here. And that is the candy wrapper artifact. Another thing I want to point out is all those the input bone transformations are the same. The profile that different variants bend the bar are different. So in this case, there might be no explicit right or wrong solution, but it would be nicer if we could have a control over that. So we introduce an extension for the type control. Here is an example of bending and twisting a bar with different levels of smoothness. They are set up either by changing the skinning weights, diffusions, or tuning the number of Laplacian's iteration with direct data mush. And we can see the bar twists quite nicely with high smoothness. It's just like the skin sliding we have when we twist the arm. However, the bending is not so good. You can think of it doesn't look like the silhouette of the band at all. Indeed, Lauer's smoothness look better. So to bring the best of both, we extend our model to combine the two different results as you can see here. The twisting is smooth while the bending is rigid and looks like an elbow. This kind of behavior is not possible with previous method, even with traditional delta mush. And for our model, we can do that with no extra cost at runtime. And let's revisit the algorithm here. So we found that after blending transformations to get the 4x4 matrix, the two sub blocks here are center of rotation of the Laplacian local patch. So P sub i corresponds to the rest pose and Q sub i corresponds to the articulated pose. So if we use this Q times P transpose to construct a new 3x3 three three submatrix and blend it into the original, we can change the rotation matrix without changing the translation. And once we have the new matrix, we can redistribute them back to each of the multi-weight size sub ij, so that the runtime algorithm, the change will be transparent. And therefore, it does not increase runtime computing costs. And that's the high-level idea, and please check the paper for more details. And now it's an example of using extension to set up the skin sliding. So here you can see the skin does not slide much for other methods such as uh, LBS, DQS, or center rotation because of their skinning weights does not diffuse much further from the elbow joint. 
And the reason is, the artists need to balance between the smoothness for twisting and smoothness for bending. And here's how the deformation looks with bending animation. You can see that although our director the mush has smoother skin sliding on twisting, it has sharper profile on the bending, which is better represent the inside rigid bone knocker. And you can still see some skin sliding here, and that's all thanks to the independent rotation and translation control. Another property that the independent control supports well for data mush is to utilize the effect we call negative bulging. So you might all familiar with the bulging artifact noticeable with dual quaternion. And actually LBS and optimized central ro rotation skinning also have the bulging issue. It is more noticeable if we draw the center line of the side surface. So you can see the pattern here with previous skinning method is the center line bulge out of angle limited by two bones. Only with data mush have the center line curve inside. And this property is useful for the hip joint deformation, just like this. Uh, normally, artists need to put the corrective shape on top of traditional skinning model like LBS or DQS to achieve this kind of effect. Here's the last example that I show skin sliding on the lower back region. For other methods, it cannot have skin movement in this region because painting the skin width of the arm down to this region will lead to more bulging. So you can see that even with influence of the arm stop very close to the shoulder, dual quaternion and optimized center ro rotation skinning still suffer with bulging. And if we paint the weight further, there will be more artifact. And to recap, we have made Delta Mush be a direct skinning model, which is suitable for high performance graphics. We also did some extension to further improve the deformation quality compared to the original Delta Mush model. And especially, our model is the first direct method with no bulging and support skin sliding. However, we have not solved many of other problems such as collision, volume preservation, or secondary deformation effect. But we hope that this work can provide theoretical ground and inspiration for the community to further explore in this direction, especially for those who already use and love Delta Mush.